professor in Sri Chandwar University. I will be your moderator for this today's session. Today's event promises an engaging and enlightening experience for all of us. Today's presentation will be about the new age career in cybersecurity, presenting BCA and MCA department from Pimpri Chinchwar University. Let's take a moment to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Sandeep Shetty. He has over 22 years of a dedicated experience in vocational skills, training, and development in different sectors. As a founder and a director of AD Skills, he held significant leadership positions with renowned education companies. His focus remains on skill development and creating valuable job opportunities for the students. He holds the prestigious titles of a certified cybersecurity interventions officer from ISAC. Now, I would like to play a virtual tour of a university, at Pimpri Chinchwa University. Let's enjoy. At Sate, the Pimpri Chinsward Education Trust has established a state private university known as Pimpri Chinsward University at Sate, Vargao Mawar, in Pune Metropolitan Regional Development Authority. It is a 30 acre campus of academic facilities and amenities for students and teachers to help them to achieve their fullest potential. The Pimpri Chinswad University campus is well connected with the cities Pune and Pimpri Chinswad by road through Mumbai Pune National Highway No. 4 as well as Mumbai Pune Expressway. Also, railway station Kanhe is at 1 km. The nearest airport is Pune Airport. PCU has its different verticals which prepares leaders from different fields. School of Engineering and Technology School of Design School of Media Arts and Communication Studies by incorporating cultural activities, events and organized tours and trips, fostering a holistic development approach. In a sense, Pimpi Chins University is not just an institution. It is a vibe that nurtures talent, fosters creativity and provides a platform for students to thrive in every aspect of their academic journey. PCU Bus Transport provides service across the city. Pimbri Chinswad University Transformative education that empowers success in a rapidly evolving world. Okay. So audience, we will take a question throughout the webinar. So please feel free to type them into the chat box. Now, without wasting any time, our valuable time, I would like request to Mr. Sandeep Shetty, sir. Please proceed the session, sir. 
thank you uh, pallavi ma'am and yes, sir. Uh, welcome sir so uh, i would like to share my screen and if you can just confirm if it is visible just give me two minutes yes sir Yes, sir. Your screen is visible, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. welcome uh, to all students to the webinar on career opportunities in uh, cyber security. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, management team for giving an opportunity uh, to us to present the exciting and new age careers in cyber security to aspiring students. So as uh, Pallavi ma'am has already introduced uh, myself, I'm not going to take much time, but I would like to uh, share some credentials uh, in cybersecurity, which I carry. Uh, I have been certified by EC Council on cybersecurity for businesses for fundamental edition. I am also a cybersecurity intervention officer, and I've been registered on the COP Connect platform, which is a social initiative, and it's a platform where we help and support cybercrime victims in getting resolution to their issues, to the problems which they have faced through cybercrime, which can be uh, frauds, uh, loss of money, identity theft, uh, stealing of data, uh, which results into blackmail or other uh, crimes, which is there. So we help the victims and we liaison them with various law enforcement agencies so that you know they get uh, solutions to their problems. I'm also empaneled with the National Security Database, which is also a prestigious empanelment program for all cybersecurity and information security experts. And this database is also recognized by government uh, cybersecurity departments like certain NTRO, and different corporates and companies who can access this data and they can connect with any uh, registered uh, cybersecurity expert and take their services. So let us now go into understanding what is cybersecurity. I am sure all of you must have heard about this term cybersecurity or you must have heard about this term cybercrime because in the last few years, uh, in every media which is there, whether it is newspapers, whether it is TV, whether it is the internet channels, you will always have seen various kind of uh, news and facts related to cyber security. You must have heard about so many cyber crimes which is happening, uh, not only to organizations, but also to individuals like you and me. We are also, uh, you know, potential victim for different cyber crimes, which is happening, different cyber frauds, which is happening. So what is cyber security? So cyber security, it, it is not only about data, because this is a myth which is there uh, among various people that when they talk about cyber security, it is only about data. No, obviously data is one of the most important element in cyber security, because in today's world where Almost everybody is on the digital platform. Entire organizations, governments, every, everyone is available on the digital platform. Your data has become very important. And that is why they say that data is the new oil. So it is more valuable than oil. It is more valuable than gold. So data is the new oil. It is more valuable. And when we talk about data, it is not only about uh, your individual personal information of a citizen, but it is also your related information. Like if you, if a data is available in a hospital, then the hospital will have data related to the patient's illness, related to the patient's medications, they are related to the patient's diagnosis. Now, this information is also very valuable. If 
uh, it is the data which is in a bank, then the bank will hold various information about the customer, which can be your, uh, you know, your personal informations like login and password to access net banking. It can be your uh, credit card or debit card pin. It can be, uh, you know, your different assets which you have in terms of savings dep deposits or fixed deposits or any MF investments or stock investments which you have of a customer. Now, all these are in, you know, valuable data which is available in the organization. So, data is a very critical element in cyber security and this is the element which every cyber criminal would like to access it and when they get this data then they sell this data to different uh, individuals or organizations who are looking to get such kind of uh, valuable data and these data is not sold openly it is only sold on the dark web or on the deep web which is uh, it is very difficult to access for people like us you know we cannot access immediately dark web and deep web so most of the data which is stolen by cyber criminals it is sold on the dark web and deep web because it is completely uh, for criminal purposes or for illegal purposes which is there so data is a very key element but when we talk about securing an organization we not only talk about securing the organization in terms of data that the data is has to be secure it is also securing the organization uh, from of its infrastructure so what is a typical infrastructure which is there in an organization every organization will have hardware resources they will have physical devices they will have software applications which they are going to use and they will have a lot of different uh, networks uh, network pro devices which are available now these devices the hardwares and software which is there they can also be attacked by cyber criminals or hackers and when they attack these devices then what will happen is it ultimately it you know stops the functioning of the organization and if they stop the functioning of the organization then what happens the fun organization will face a lot of economic losses they will face a lot of challenges they may lose customers so it or they will also their reputation will also go for a toss so when we talk about cyber security we talk about overall protection or overall security of the hardware of the software and the data from the attackers the primary purpose of cyber security is that we don't allow the criminals or the hackers to access the information or access the data which is available in the organization. And even if they are able to access, they should not be able to change it or they should not be able to destroy the sensitive information. So that is the primary purpose of cyber security. And it is a process that is designed to protect networks. It is designed to protect devices from external th threats, which is there. So this is what we talk about security or we talk about cyber security. You must have all heard about these different kind of attacks, the cyber attacks, which happens to uh, the organizations. So it can be a malware attack. It can be a phishing attack. Phishing is one of the most popular attacks in the world and it not only affects organizations but also affects individuals like you and me. So you must have been receiving a lot of SMSs from different originators, you know, such an SMS can come to you saying that, you know, you have not paid your electricity bill and it will be disconnected or, you know, your uh, uh, admission, your hall ticket is not available. So, for example, if you're going for an external exam or a, a entrance exam and you get a message saying that your admit card is now available, click on this particular link. So, what happens is in a phishing scam or in a phishing attack, they basically uh, motivate the uh, user to click on that particular link. And why will any user like you and me click on a particular link 
when we get an sms or when we get an email you know there is an email phishing scam or there is an sms phishing scam so if you get such messages why do we click on that particular link that is basically because of two things one is we are afraid that we will lose money or there will be some problem which will happen so because of that fear we click on that particular link and the second emotion is greed you know we we will think that oh maybe i will win an award so you may get a message saying that you have won an amazon voucher for 2000 rupees click on this particular link to claim the voucher so you get excited and you say oh i got a 2000 rupees voucher why don't i click on this particular link and claim it so greed is another emotion fear is another emotion these are the two main emotions which the criminals will actually use so that they can attack the user or the organization and when you click on this link then what will happen is the moment you click on that link you expose your device whether it is a laptop whether it is a mobile you expose your entire device to the hacker and through that exposure what happens is now the hacker can enter into your device he can access your data he can access your confidential data your login data your bank data financial data all this your photographs your videos everything he can access it and once he access it then he can in he can do other crimes you know where he can go into blackmail we can go into other crimes which is there and he can create havoc into your life or into your day to day operations so this is one kind of attack which is called as phishing and phishing is the most common attacks which is there that is why we always educate the masses with the students the senior citizens the parents the children everybody we ed educate them that please be careful whenever you are clicking on particular link which comes to you as an sms or it may come to you as an email nowadays you also get a voice recorded voice phishing scam which is called as a wishing scam which is there and the latest one is a qr code scam because nowadays we are using a lot of qr codes for any transaction whether it is transferring money whether it is you know booking your ticket or whether it is accessing your movie ticket so there are a lot of qr codes which are available if you want to uh, you know like if you if the college wants to send a brochure to you through a qr code they will give you the qr code you scan the qr code and you downly download the brochure of the college so qr codes are very very frequently used and hackers are now using this qr code for creating a kind of a uh you know a link through which once you access scan the qr code then the device is completely accessed by the hacker so qr phishing is also becoming very very uh, popular in the cyber crime then you have ransomware ransomware is another very popular uh, you know type of cyber attack so what happens in ransomware it is very very easy to understand because the word ransom so what is the meaning of the word ransom uh, when you have kidnappers if they kidnap a child then they ask money from the parents to release the child so that money which they ask is called as ransom so similarly in a ransomware cyber attack what happens is these criminals will access the organization resources and they will encrypt the entire data they will hack the entire resources so that no employees can use their computers no servers can be accessible networks can will be down of the company data will not be accessible and on every employee screen there will be a image which says that you have been hacked if you want to use your computer then you have to pay us so much money you have to pay us ransom this is called as a ransomware attack and the ransomware attack is very critical because in a ransomware attack what happens is the entire company's operation comes to a standstill they cannot do any work their employees cannot do any work no transaction can be done business transaction can be done by the company and if the company loses time loses days 
then they will lose money they will lose a lot of revenue so then they pay to the criminals and when they pay to the criminals then the criminals will give access or they may not give access also. there has been cases where after receiving the money also the criminals have not given access to an organization so ransomware is another attack similarly there is password attack where they hack the password and the user credentials of the employees and the organization then cross site scripting sql injection uh, basically attacking your websites man in the middle attack where if you are trying to access a server the hacker will come into the middle and he will access your data he will not send it to the server he will send it to somewhere else so these are different kind of attacks cyber attacks which is there and when we talk about cyber security we are helping uh, cyber security professionals are trained to protect organization and users from such kind of attacks and to secure the entire infrastructure of the organization so let us now understand what is the uh, global industry of cyber security so when we talk about cyber security let us uh, let us first understand that cyber security is not a name of a software cyber security is not a product cyber security is itself a industry it is itself a technology which is there and there are a lot of other products a lot of other softwares which are services which are used in cyber security okay as per the mckinsey's report the global cyber security market will reach up to 2 trillion us dollars so just imagine the size of the cyber security industry this is the huge cyber security industry which is now there and moment the industry is huge the industry grows then what will happen there will be a huge requirement for talented skilled professionals to work in this industry because if the industry is growing there will be requirement of more number of skilled professionals in this industry and this is exactly what is happening and that is what has translated in the job market of cyber security professionals and there is a requirement of around 35 lakh skilled professionals in globally in cyber security so as the industry grows as the number of attacks number of breaches are growing now because of ai what has happened is ai is artificial intelligence all of you might be knowing because of ai what has happened is even the hackers and the criminals have become very smart and it has become very easy for them to create new kind of attacks new kind of viruses new kind of malware uh, files malware is malicious files which are there so because of ai their time taken to create an attack or create a virus is much much lesser and the number of attacks have started increasing 91% of the organization across the world has reported at least one cyber incident or breach now why this statement is very important no company can say that i am safe from cyber security no company can say ki cyber attacks will not happen to my company no no company can say whether it is an enterprise whether it is a huge corporate whether it is a sme any industry and in any vertical it can be a banking world com bank company it can be a fintech company it can be a pharma company it can be a automotive company like maruti hyundai tata motors it can be a consulting company like tcs infosys a product development company like mahindra tech mahindra lnt it can be healthcare hospitals it can be educational institutions also any company any organization government organizations government departments everybody are potential victims of cyber security and to protect themselves for cyber security they need to have a cyber security team with trained professionals to protecting their organization so when you are looking at jobs in this market it is not only related to it it is it can be in any sector so cyber security is a the potential job opportunity in any sector in this particular world
Now coming to India, as all of you know that India is one of the fastest growing economy in the world. And it has now also growing in the coming years. So what has happened is because of our growing economy, we are a target of many cyber criminals. We are a target of hackers. We are a tiger, uh, target of uh, hacktivities. We are a target of various kind of governments who are trying to attack our country. In 2022, out of the total global cyber crime, 68% of the cyber crime was targeted at India. Now, when you compare to other countries, you will see globally it is still 39%. But India, in India, 68% of the global attacks was targeted in India. So, it is very important that we should be aware about these cyber crimes and we should protect and secure ourselves from such kind of attacks. Because of these statistics, even governments of India have taken a lot of steps towards ensuring that cyber security is enforced in our country and we are protecting ourselves from such kind of crimes. So these statistics are very important. The attack on government agencies have doubled. According to the latest estimates, this is just a last month estimate which is there. Online cyber frauds has bleed the Indian economy of 70,000 crore. 70,000 crore. Our country has lost 70,000 crore just because of cyber frauds. So just imagine how it is bleeding the economy. So as cyber security professional, you are not just doing a job in a, a company. You are basically going to help the country. You are going to help our citizens from such kind of cyber attacks and cyber frauds. These are more other statistics which is there, okay, how uh, India has been affected last year when we were doing the G20 summit, the G20 website was targeted at least 60 lakh tanks last year. Coming to what is happening in India in terms of cyber security jobs, there is a huge uh, demand supply gap where the companies are looking for professionals but they are not getting the right skilled uh, cyber security professionals. As per Data Security Council of India, there is a demand for 1 million, that is 10 lakh cyber security professionals by 2025. And trust me, the most of the companies are facing a huge challenge in meeting this particular demand. And the biggest challenge is at the entry level of cyber security uh, field, you know, because most of the IT professionals who have experience of 10 to 12 years, they have transitioned their field to cyber security. So they have moved from existing field to cyber security. But because they are experienced with 10 to 12 years, they have taken up the positions in the middle management and in the top management. And the biggest problem is now in the entry level. So as uh, graduates, when you are going to graduate out of this any program with cyber security skilled program, uh, skilled uh, knowledge, then you are going to enter into the entry level jobs and there is a huge demand for entry level jobs now. The demand is quite high. So this is the right career opportunity for students who are looking to join in any particular career in cyber security. So what are the opportunities in cyber security? So if you look at a career in cyber security, it is variously divided into two categories. One is the offensive security and the second is the defensive security. Now offensive security, it is also called as uh, your, you know, red team professionals. They are also called as ethical hackers. And this is one of the biggest uh, uh, opportunities which are there where companies are looking for skilled professionals in the offensive security field. So let us understand what is offensive security and what is defensive security, because that will help you to also understand that what will be your job roles when you are going to become a cyber security professional. So let us look at a typical IT infrastructure uh, 
uh, in an organization. So a typical IT in infrastructure, you will have offices, you will have offices in different cities which are connected to through networks, through cloud. Okay, now cloud uh, deployment is very, very uh, popular and it has been used by every organization. You will have servers, you will have web servers, uh, you will have uh, employees, workstations or laptops accessed, uh, which are connected through networks. You will also have many employees who might be working from home. And if they're working from home, they might be using their own devices. They might be using their own, uh, uh, what you call as uh, broadband connections, their wireless network, which is there. So this is how a typical infrastructure, IT infrastructure of an organization is uh, connected. And once this infrastructure is present, now what will happen is, I want to secure this infrastructure. But before I want to secure this infrastructure, I want to know where all my weaknesses are there. Where, from which area a hacker can enter into my system. What all weaknesses are there in my IT infrastructure? So for doing this analysis, the offensive security team, what they will do is, like hackers, they will also attack the IT infrastructure of the organization. And when they will attack the IT infrastructure, they will attack it from, they will attack the servers, they will attack the hardware devices, they will attack the firewalls, they will network, attack the network devices like switches, hubs. They may attack the employee machines. They may also try to attack through the uh, home network of any employee who is working from home. They may attack the cloud network, which is there. So from attacking from these areas, then they will get to know these are my vulnerabilities. These are my weaknesses or these are the gaps in my IT infrastructure. And if these gaps or weaknesses are not removed, then what will happen? Then my system or my infrastructure is not secure and any hacker or any criminal can enter through this particular system. So this is called as ethical hacking because why it is called as ethical hacking? Because the people are hacking the system with the appro approval of the organization. And their objective of hacking is not to do any illegal work, but their objective is to identify the vulnerabilities. Now, once these vulnerabilities are identified, so this is one vulnerability, this is second vulnerability, this is third vulnerability. So now the vulnerabilities are identified. So now what the offensive team will do, they will create this vulnerability assessment report and they will share it to the defensive security team. And what the defensive security team will do, defensive security team will apply all those software services. They will apply, implement those software uh, patches and they will remove the vulnerabilities. And once these vulnerabilities is removed, then what happens? Your system becomes secure and there is no weaknesses or there is no gaps now in your system which the criminals can enter through or they can hack into your system. So is this a one-time activity? No, it is not a one-time activity. It has to be done regularly. Why it has to be done regularly? Because as I told you, the criminals are also becoming very smart and intelligent. Every day, there are so many thousands of malwares which are getting attacked, which are getting created. So you, they may come up with a new malware through which they can enter into your system. So the offensive team has to again create this penetration testing techniques. Again, they have to do vulnerability assessment. So on a regular basis, they have to do it so that if there are any vulnerabilities, they identify it and then they remove those vulnerabilities and then your yes, infrastructure becomes secure. So this is what a typical job role of a cybersecurity professional is where they are going to work with the IT infrastructure and then they are going to apply various kind of uh, attacks. They are going to apply various kind of penetration test testing techniques to identify the vulnerabilities of a system.
So that is why it is very important for a cybersecurity professional to have knowledge about these networking, should have knowledge about network devices, should have good knowledge about operating systems, especially Windows and Linux. And if your IT knowledge is very good, then you can become a good cybersecurity professional. So this is what we talked about ethical hacking. So this is what the offensive security team will be doing. They will be attacking and exploiting, exploiting the vulnerabilities. They're based on these vulnerabilities, they will create a report and then they will share it with the defensive security team. So if you are going to become a cybersecurity professional and you are going to work in the uh, red team or the offensive security team, these are the various tasks which you are going to do. That is penetration testing, social engineering, physical security testing. Now, what do you mean by physical security testing? Most of the companies will be using various kinds of physical devices. What are those physical devices? Like for attendance, there might be biometric devices. Now, biometric devices can also be hacked, which is a physical device. Okay. There might be temperature controlling devices which are there in a power plant or in your factory of a company. This, those devices can also be hacked. So physical security testing is also very important. Then application security testing. Now application security testing is very, very important in today's time because most organizations are using third party softwares. Like they might be using Tally for accounting. They might be using SAP for their various uh, uh, tasks in the organization. Uh, for enterprise resource planning. They might be using uh, Oracle. They might be using some other third-party softwares. Now, what happens is, even if your infrastructure is secure, but that third party is not secure, then the hacker can enter into your system through the third-party software. So that is why any third-party software which is being developed are also have to be secure. So application security testing is also very important. Besides that, compliance testing. So in cybersecurity, compliances are very important. So what are compliances? Compliances are nothing but guidelines which are given by different uh, quality assurance organizations. So like in ISO, the compliance for cybersecurity is ISO 27001. Okay. And if it's a bank, then the bank also has to follow RBI guidelines for cybersecurity. And RBI enforces these guidelines very strictly. If the bank does not follow it, then the bank may lose their banking license from RBI. RBI will cancel the banking licenses of that particular bank. Okay. If it's a payment gateway or a payment company like Paytm or uh, any other uh, Google Pay or UPI, then they have to follow PCI DSS compliance. If it is a healthcare company, then they have to follow HIPAA, HIPPA compliance. So there are various compliances which are related to cybersecurity. So compliance testing is also a good uh, profile, job profile, which is there. And many of you, if you are really interested in compliances, after you gain two to, two to three years of experience in cybersecurity, you can go into auditing. You can become a information security auditor you can become, you can work in GRC, which is governance, risk, and compliances. This is a separate department in cybersecurity, and you can grow into that particular field also. Okay. So these are the different job roles in cybersecurity, uh, especially at the entry level. You can work as an application security engineer, you can work as a cybersecurity analyst, you can work as a network security engineer. You can also work as a penetration tester or an ethical hacker or a VAPT analyst. VAPT is vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. You can work as an IT security specialist. And when you look at the career growth for a cybersecurity professional, at the entry level, when you're working as a cybersecurity engineer or information security engineer or a cybersecurity associate, then after two years of experience, two to three years of experience, you can become an analyst, 
and after four five years of experience you can become an information security manager you can then become a director you can become a vp and at the top you have the ciso that is chief information security officer so like most of the cxos like you have ceo of a company you have a cto of a company you have a cfo of a company so every organization for their cyber security department they have a ciso which is called as a chief information security officer so this is a career path in cyber security as you gain uh, years of experience so the job roles job openings you can enter at the entry level starting from 5 to 6 lakhs till 12 lakhs and if you look at there is a huge shortage of cyber security talent especially at the entry level and because the demand is high and the supply is less what is happening is the moment you get a one year experience at the entry level then you will be in high demand from other organizations because they are always looking at skilled manpower at the entry level this is a recent uh, statistics in fy24 the hiring in cyber security has grown over 200 percent now this is a very very a huge growth which is there okay now why this is happening is most of the companies almost all companies are migrating their data into cloud and moment they are migrating their data into cloud they have to implement robust cyber security measures because it is very very critical and this has increased the demand for skilled professionals in cloud and cyber security fields so if you look at it the demand for cyber security has grown to 215% from the first 6 months of 24 to the second 6 months of 24 just in 6 months the demand has increased by 215% so this is the huge requirement which is there in the cyber security field so since we have now covered about the demand we have covered about the huge opportunities which is there in cyber security now we would like to inform you that how you can enter into the cyber security field how you can become trained and skilled into cyber security field our organization ed skills is a training company in cyber security and we have partnered with isac which is information sharing and analysis center for certifying skilled professionals in cyber security and helping them jo getting jobs in the industry now what is isac isac is a section 8 non profit foundation which works in cyber security and they have been there in the cyber security field for the last uh, 10 years they are working very closely with the government of india their four programs are certified by aict under nit 2.0 they work closely with ministry of defense especially indian army indian air force uh, where they are and the navy where they are training the uh, soldiers out there on cyber security and how they can build capacity building in cyber security they work very closely with certain with different government departments they also have national cyber security scholar program from iit gandhinagar which is basically given to working professionals in different organizations in the cyber security field they have implemented this national security database which is a prestigious impanelment of information security experts and this national security database is impanelled by the government of india by certain now what is certain cert dash in now this certain is a indian security uh, response team it is a government of india central department agency which is completely responsible for ensuring cyber security of our country okay and they enforce cyber security governance cyber security policies for all industries in the country so it is a very important department isac works very closely with them okay the nsd uh, basically impanels the people at different levels so our students who get trained in isac they are basically impaneled under falcon level falcon is basically high skilled professional with proven technical competencies ideal for both offensive and defensive engagement so the students once they clear our program they get the falcon uh, impanelment in the national security database
similarly you have higher levels which are basically for management professionals these are the different incubations of uh, isaac uh, isaac they have cyber range which is cyber security simulation labs and soc consulting cop connect i have already told you is it's a social impact uh, platform helping individuals uh, like you and me to get help from cop connect platform and uh, whenever we are a victim we don't know what to do so we can go on to the cop connect platform which is also available as a mobile app and then there are intervention officers who will help us it is free of charge there is it's not a paid platform it is a free platform and with the help of these intervention officers the victims get solutions to their problems breach point is a private bug bounty company and platform of isaac and then there is a clean clean exit with certified pa professionals on ethical behavior and basically it helps employers to know that the professional they are hiring will never do any fraudulent activities in organizations isaac also has implemented uh, digital labs now digital labs are various uh, models which are there simulation models uh, i will show you a demo of that but in india we have eight locations in uh, abroad there are in five locations and incidentally they have uh, installed a digital lab for uae cyber security council in dubai and it has won the guinness world records for the largest physical uh, digital lab uh, simulation lab in cyber security so all the programs of uh, isacs they are basically cyber security programs are approved by aict under need 2.0 they are also empaneled under nascom future skills prime okay uh, so you also get a certificate from nascom future skills prime it is empaneled under national security database you get listed in cop connect platform and you also get a certification in professional ethics at workplace the uh, courses are conducted online you get uh, access to cyber range virtual labs now what is cyber range virtual lab see in cyber security practical training is very important but students cannot do any practical training or exercises on a live environment so like for example if we are going to teach password cracking techniques now you cannot implement these techniques on any live website if you do that it is a crime it is a illegal attempt and you can be prosecuted under various laws and you can be uh, imprisoned so it is very important uh, for you as students that even in future if you are going to learn from anywhere don't don't implement any such kind of exercises on a live environment you can only do it in a virtual lab or a simulated environment you cannot do it in a live environment because it is illegal it is hacking if you are doing it it is hacking it is illegal and you you will be committing a crime unknowingly okay so we give students access to cyber range virtual labs which has more than 250 labs and exercises and the students can do all kind of practical training whether it is website penetration whether it is password hacking whether it is device hacking everything they can do it in these virtual labs and they can get practical training while they are doing the program this is how the virtual lab interface looks like so as you can see if you are doing penetration testing there are various labs which are available where you will have an attacker machine you will have a source machine and using those testing you can do your practical training when you look at the people who are working in the uh, organization or in the industry i am just highlighting some of the few alumni of isaac courses and if you look at these alumni they are working in top topmost uh, positions in organizations so they we have people who are working in jp morgan in deloitte in siemens in uh, uh, capgemini in webel gmr group microsoft tcs then we also have in cinder uh, electric you can also see people working in doordarshan in ether energy walmart sbi cards so when you look at this organization also you will get a feel that it is not related to only it 
you have cyber security job openings in various kind of organizations in every sector you will have job opportunities available and we have also a lot of alumni who are in the uh, indian government who are also working in the indian defense so the isaac courses are very well recognized in the industry so this is about us we are a training partner for isaac we train students in cyber security ai ml and data science and we have launched a higher train and deploy model which is only for final year students or students who are graduates now these students can go through our program and before they join the program they will get a confirmed offer letter from the organization obviously they have to clear the interview and once they clear the interview they will get the offer letter from the organization where they will get the uh, designation at cyber security trainee with a salary of 4 to 5 lakhs per year and it's a 6 month training program and once you finish successfully the 6 months training program then you can get the you can start the job with the organization the uh, students who are eligible for this program is graduates from any stream it or non it and or who are studying in the final year of graduation so this is what the program is we start with the foundation module which is hardware networking operating system storage backup and cloud fundamentals and then we go into the cyber security module where we train you as professionals for the offensive security department and these are the certifications which we have already shared with you and once you finish this program then you will be entering into job roles in the offensive security team where you will be able to perform various kind of penetration test testing techniques ethical hacking techniques so that you can identify vulnerabilities you can identify the weaknesses in the infrastructure and then you can help to make the uh, organization secure so these are the job roles after completing this program that is cyber security trainee information security analyst you can start working as a ethical hacker as a pen tester or a vapt analyst a red team consultant or a security tester or security consultant right so with the application processes if any one of you are interested if you are a graduate from any stream you can just get connected with our uh, team and you can register for interview once you clear the interview you will get the conditional offer letter and you can start your course and after successfully completing the course you can start your job these are some of our successful students uh, as you can see the students are from different uh, uh, streams different backgrounds we have engineering students we have commerce students and we have btech students bsc students so we have students from different backgrounds who have become successful in the cyber security uh, domain so this is all which we wanted to share with uh, the students and uh, again thank you very much if there are any questions i would like to uh, answer some of your questions if there is any okay i can see in uh, some questions which are there okay amazing job opportunities right there are a lot of job opportunities which are available right any questions yeah which language uh, yes uh, you can actually uh, go for you know if you want to build a career in cyber security and you want to go into uh, you know pro more professional at a senior level then knowledge of python will also help you to become a good cyber security expert but at the entry level there is no coding or no programming language required after you gain experience if you know python then it will help you can a post grad apply for this course definitely the minimum eligibility is graduate so a post graduate can also apply for this particular course so i'm waiting for one more minute for any questions if there is any other question we'll wait for one minute and i hope that all of you have found this uh, presentation informative
and it will help you to take a decision to enter into this very exciting and growing field the cyber security field which is very very important not only for uh, for a career perspective but also from a social impact perspective because as a cyber security professional you are not only going to be uh, uh, you know working in an organization but you also going to help the uh, your country you are going to become a part of the social engagement uh, impact where you are going to protect the citizens of the country from cyber crimes So I got a question where it says uh, there will be jobs after four years. Uh, so I understand that there might be some students who are be now entering into uh, their graduation stream now. Okay, the cyber security is a mandatory requirement. It is a mandatory requirement for every organization from compliance point of view. And as I told you that because of new technology, because of AI. what has happened is you know the type of attacks has increased the number of attacks have increased and this will be going on it will keep on increasing it on a daily basis so after 4 years the industry will be much much bigger the number of professionals which will be required will be much much more so obviously the there will be a growing requirement even after 4 years so if you are student is going to enter into an industry now into this particular field now after 4 years once he finishes graduation or his uh, studies then the requirement will still be there the requirement will still be there in this uh, industry and when we talk about cyber security all of you must have know, you know about software development okay so even cyber security is now being implemented at software development stage you must have heard about devops then you must have also heard now lately about devsecops so devsecops is where you are implementing security at the development stage of the software okay so whether it is software development whether it is any application development whether it is any implementation of uh, networking protocols everywhere security will be used and trust me after a few years cyber security knowledge will become a mandatory requirement for any job profile in the it industry so if you are going for any job profile you will see that they will ask you do you know cyber security at least on a basics level which is there. any more questions if there are no questions then uh, i would like to thank you all for giving me an opportunity for uh, presenting the cyber security career opportunities and i wish the students all the very best for their future thank you thank you sandeep sir for sharing a valuable information to us definitely the audience will get full the knowledge about the what is cyber security different uh, cyber attacks and different task under happening under the cyber security now it was the uh, wonderful session sir thank you for the informatic session uh, now i will take some time for the uh, wishes now i hope so ki questions are finished because already we have the students have typed in the chat box also now let's uh, let us give a heartful appreciations to all those who are contributing to making evening a successful finally i would like to convey my gratitude to everyone here for taking the time to join us today thank you for everyone and thank you sandeep sir i'm declaring that this uh, webinar is closed and i'm leaving this webinar from this webinar Thank you Sharon ma'am